Hello and welcome everybody, I'm FZN from Geekademics.com and today I'll show you how you can set up your own live stream on Twitch TV using Open Broadcaster software. I'll split up that tutorial into three different parts. In the first one I'll show you how you can set up a basic stream. In the second one I'll show you how you can improve that stream by adding additional scenes to your stream. And in the third part I'll show you how you can create your very own streaming overlay. To start streaming on Twitch TV, you need two things. You need an account on Twitch TV and you need a streaming software. Now let's check out how you get those. First of all, go to Twitch TV. It simply is twitch.tv. I'm on the German Twitch, that's why there's this little DE in front of that. Never mind that. Then in the top right corner, you click on register new account. You have to choose a username. I'll use a dummy account for now, get a password, check your birthday. I wasn't born in 1928, but never mind, and enter your email address. I have a dummy address for occasions like this. Use that. Then just get in that nice little capture in here. Five, four, two, and click on register. There you go. Now you have your nice little Twitch TV account created. The first thing you do is you click on your account up here, click on that little arrow and choose your dashboard. Once you are in your dashboard, choose the button stream key right to the top. Click on that and you will get to the stream key section. Now there's another button down here that should say show key. I won't click that now because I don't want to show you my key even though it's just a dummy account. I might want to use it. If someone knows this key he can stream to your channel so you should keep it private. Click on show key then the key will show up. Simply uh, select it and copy it to your clipboard. The next thing we need to do is get our streaming software. Now the most popular streaming softwares are XSplit and Open Broadcaster software, in short OBS. The latter one is the one that I use and the one that I want to show you. OBS is an open source software, that means it is completely free, but there might be some bugs. But never mind, it works perfectly fine. I haven't encountered any bugs whatsoever during the last couple of months of streaming that I've been done. So uh, don't be scared of the open source thing. It is, I think, a very good tool. To get it, simply go to obsproject.com. That should bring you to this website and click on the big green download button. Once you do that, just save your file to your hard drive and run the installer. When you're done installing OBS and you run the program, it should look something like this. The first thing we need to do is to set up our proper settings. To do this, click on settings to the top, choose settings. In the general section, you can choose your language and you can set up a profile. I recommend you doing this because then you can save your streaming scenes and everything. You should check this box, enable cursor over projector, and then you're done in the general section. In the encoding section, the most important thing to choose is your bitrate. The thing is, your bitrate depends on the bandwidth you have available. If you have a strong internet connection, you can use higher bitrates. Higher bitrate means uh, a higher quality of your stream. The stream will be more fluent uh, and more enjoyable in general. However, it highly depends on your connection. So I recommend googling what the ideal bit rates for your bandwidth are and then choose one and just try out if you can stream fluently uh, and if you have enough bandwidth to actually do this. Remember, you usually want to stream gameplay 
if all of your bandwidth is used for your streaming, then your game will suffer. Imagine playing a first person shooter with a ping of, I don't know, 200 or something. You don't want to do that. So make sure you figure out a proper bitrate and insert it in this box. The rest of the encoding section is not very interesting for us. Down here is the audio encoding. I recommend leaving it as it is. Now, the broadcast settings are important. First of all, in the mode field, choose live stream. At streaming service, choose Twitch slash Justin TV, because that is where we're streaming at. Choose a server that fits your location. I am in Germany. Obviously, I chose a European server that is in Frankfurt, Germany. And in this field down here, you should insert your stream key, the one that you acquired on your Twitch TV dashboard earlier. Check the auto reconnect box if you want your stream to automatically reconnect once it crashes for whatever reason. And down here you can also choose a hotkey for starting and stopping your stream. If you only use one monitor, I highly recommend that you do that. I haven't done it because I use two monitors and I start and stop my stream on my second monitor. By the way, if you want to do streaming more seriously, then I recommend using two monitors because it makes things much, much easier and more accessible. Okay, so much for the broadcast settings. In the video settings, you can choose the resolution you want to stream in. Now. The base resolution is the resolution of your monitor. I'm using a 24 inch monitor that runs in 1920 times 1080 pixels, in short 1080p. Uh, that's why I have this in here. That is the resolution of the monitor you're using. If you use resolution downscale down here, it will affect the resolution of your stream on Twitch TV. If you leave it at none, you will stream in the same resolution you run your monitor in. In that case, 1920 times 1080 pixels. If you want to stream in a lower quality, you can simply downscale it. If I would downscale it by 1.5 times, I would have a 720p stream. Downscaling can be necessary depending on how good your computer is. I'm running an older machine, it's three years old, it is a Core i5 CPU with only 8 gigabytes of memory. Now I can stream in 1080p depending on the game I stream. If the game is not that demanding, I can do that. But if I stream, let's say, a first person shooter like Planet Side 2, uh, that is a more demanding game, I might not want to stream in 1080p. I can do it but I will feel it in my game. The frames per second will drop to an amount that is not really playable. So if I stream more demanding games, I have to downscale. It depends on your computer. If you have a very good, very fast computer, big CPU, loads of memory, you should be able to stream in 1080p no matter what. Frames per second, I recommend using 30. 30 to 60 frames is HD, below that is below HD. Again, it depends on your machine. If you have a very, very fast CPU, you can stream in more than 30 frames. I do not recommend it though. 30 FPS is way enough to create a fluent and nicely uh, visible stream. More than that will increase the load on your machine substantially. So try it out if you can do it. I recommend 30 FPS. Disable the Aero desktop of Windows. I recommend just checking that because it can cause problems. For the audio settings, in here you can choose your microphone. I'm using an USB audio interface. That's why that's there. If you have a headset, um, that will show up. Check show only connected devices. Choose the one you need to use. Simple as that. Up here, this is your uh, audio output, your sound. Just leave it on default. Force microphone to mono. I do this because 
I use a microphone in an audio interface that only is connected to one channel. If I would not check this box, people could only hear my commentary on one speaker. If you use a normal headset or a stereo microphone, you do not need to check this. If you only use a mono recording microphone, you need to check this. You can set push to talk if you want to, I don't. You can set a microphone boost if you want to. Just figure out what's good for you, run a little test stream, figure out the volume levels of your game you're running and your microphone to balance it out properly. The advanced settings, I recommend leaving those alone. I do not know what exactly they do. I didn't touch them and everything runs fine. Microphone noise gate. Again, this may be helpful if you want to shut your microphone if you're not talking and you do not want to record some sort of low level noises like mouse clicks and uh, keyboard noise or your CPU fans or whatever. You can dabble with the microphone nose gate, but it's not necessary. Okay, so much for the settings. Click OK to save everything and then we're all set up for now. Once you're set up in your OBS settings, it's time to actually add the scene you want to stream to Twitch. To do this, right click into this box down here, into the scene box and click add scene. Should give that scene a name, I call it general. And there you go. Now you can add sources to your scene. To do that, right click into the sources field, choose add. And now we have to choose what type of source we want to add. The first thing you need, obviously, is your monitor, because you want to stream your monitor. You could just stream a special window. For example, if you run your game in windowed mode, you could just stream that window and the rest of your monitor will not be seen on stream. Or you can even capture a special game. I won't do that now because the game capture feature is still in development and it might cause problems. I recommend to simply use a monitor capture. What this does is it will stream your entire monitor to Twitch TV. Everything you see on your monitor will be seen on your stream. Click that, give it a name as well. I call it screen, click OK, and this window will pop up. Now I can just choose which monitor I want to stream. I have two, so I can choose in between them. I choose my first one, which is my main monitor, and I check the box on Capture Mouse Cursor. This way, my mouse will be seen on screen. It's useful if you want to point out stuff. If you don't want your mouse to be seen, just uncheck that box. I don't really see a reason for that. You can adjust the gamma, the opacity, but I recommend just leaving it as it is. Choose your monitor, choose Capture Mouse Cursor and click OK. Now your source is added and we can check whether everything is as we want it to be. To do this, click on this Preview Stream button right here. Now you can see what your stream would show once you go live with it. As you can see, it is my screen. Everything that's on that would be streamed. If you're satisfied with that, stop Preview and click on start recording. Now you see what you are recording and it actually shows up on your stream. Now, if we go to our channel, you can actually see my desktop on the stream. Obviously now in the stream, you see the stream because I'm streaming the stream, if you get my meaning. There you go. If I minimize that, you should see the same stuff happening on the stream after a couple of seconds. There is a slight delay. It was increased a while ago in Twitch. It is now about, I don't know, half a minute or so. So everything you do will happen about half a minute later in Twitch TV. There you go. I minimized my stuff and now you can see it on the stream. I will stop the streaming for now and show you a couple of different things you can do in your Twitch TV channel to spice up your stream. To do that, go back to your dashboard 
and select a title for your broadcast. For example, I could call this tutorial. Come on, tutorial stream. What is going on here? You can choose whether you're playing or not playing and you can choose a game. For example, if I wanted to stream, let's say Diablo 3, I could choose Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. Simply click on update. Broadcast update successful. And if you go back to your channel, you can see that the information you just entered pops up right here. You can also add avatars and pictures that should be shown on screen when you're not streaming. And you can do that by clicking on this button up here, which is the settings button. Here you can choose a picture. This is your avatar. Simply click on browse and add it. You can add a little biography about yourselves. Uh, you can display a player banner if you're not streaming on the channel and video section. Again, just browse for, for, a, uh, for an image and upload it and all sorts of things. Just figure out how to do things to spice up your channel a little bit. And obviously you also have the chat to the right. There you can send messages to your viewers. Your viewers can chat amongst themselves. Um, if you want to monitor your chat while you're actually streaming, again, get a second monitor. All right, that's it for now. I hope I was of a little help. If you want to set up a stream for the first time, in the next part of this tutorial, I will show you how you can add different sources to create an overall more enjoyable streaming experience. Until then, take care everybody. FCDN out.